everybody, it's Mrs. Marquez again, and we are reading The Tale of Despero by Kate DiCamillo. We read chapters one through three yesterday, and today we are starting on chapter four, called Enter the P. Despero's brothers and sisters soon abandoned the thankless task of trying to educate him in the ways of being a mouse, and so Despero was free. He spent his days as he wanted. He wandered through the rooms of the castle, staring dreamily at the light streaming in through the stained glass windows. He went to the library and read over and over again the story of the fair maiden and the knight who rescued her, and he discovered, finally, the source of the honey-sweet sound. The sound was music. The sound was King Philip playing his guitar and singing to his daughter, the Princess P, every night before she fell asleep. Hidden in a hole in the wall of the princess's bedroom, the mouse listened with all his heart. The sound of the king's music made Despero's soul grow large and light inside of him. Oh, he said, it sounds like heaven. It smells like honey. He stuck his left ear out of the hole in the wall so that he could hear the music better, and then he stuck his right ear out so that he could hear better still, and it wasn't too long before one of his paws followed his head, and then another paw, and then without any real planning on Despero's part, the whole of him was on display, all in an effort to get closer to the music. Now, while Despero did not indulge in many of the normal behaviors of mice, he did adhere to one of the most basic and elemental of all mice rules. Do not ever, under any circumstances, reveal yourself to humans. But the music, the music, the music made him lose his head and act against the few small mouse instincts he was in possession of, and because of this, he revealed himself, and in no time at all, he was spied by the sharp-eyed Princess P. Oh, Papa, she said, look, a mouse. The king stopped singing. He squinted. The king was nearsighted. That is, anything that was not right in front of his eyes was very difficult for him to see. Where, said the king. There, said Princess P. She pointed. That, my dear, P is a bug, not a mouse. It's much too small to be a mouse. No, no, it is a mouse. A bug, said the king, who liked to be right. A mouse, said the pea, who knew that she was right. And for Despero, he was beginning to realize that he had made a very grave error. He trembled, he shook, he sneezed, he considered fainting. He's frightened, said the pea. Look, he's so afraid he's shaking. I think he was listening to the music. Play something, Papa. A king play music for a bug? King Philip wrinkled his forehead. Is that proper, do you think? Wouldn't that make this into some kind of topsy-turvy, wrong-headed world if a king played music for a bug? Papa, I told you, he's a mouse, said the pea. Please? Oh, well, if it'll make you happy, I, the king, will play music for a bug. A mouse, corrected the pea. The king adjusted his heavy gold crown. He cleared his throat. He strummed the guitar and started to sing a song about stardust. The song was as sweet as light shining through a stained glass window, as captivating as the story in a book. Despero forgot all his fear. He only wanted to hear the music. He crept closer and then closer still, until, reader, he was sitting right at the foot of the king. Chapter 5 What Furlow Saw the Princess P looked down at Despero. She smiled at him, and while her father played another song, a song about the deep purple falling over sleepy garden walls, the princess reached out and touched the top of the mouse's head. Despero stared up at her in wonder. The P, he decided, looked just like the picture of the fair maiden in the book in the library. The princess smiled at Despero again, and this time, Despero smiled back. And then, something incredible happened. The mouse fell in love. Reader, you may ask this question. In fact, you must ask this question. Is it ridiculous for a very small, sickly, big-eared mouse to fall in love with a beautiful human princess named P? The answer is yes, of course it's ridiculous. Love is ridiculous, but love is also wonderful. And powerful, and Despero's love for the Princess P would prove, in time, to be all of these things. Powerful, wonderful, and ridiculous. 
You're so sweet, said the princess to Despero. You're so tiny. As Despero looked up at her adoringly, Furlo happened to scurry past the princess's room, moving his head left to the right, left to right, back and forth. Cripes, said Furlo. He stopped, staring into the princess's room. His whiskers became as tight as bowstrings. What Furlo saw was Despero Tilling sitting at the foot of the king. What Furlo saw was the princess touching the top of his brother's head. Cripes, said Furlo again. Oh, cripes, he's nuts. He's a goner. And executing a classic scurry, Furlo went off to tell his father, Lester Tilling, the terrible, unbelievable news of what he had just seen. Chapter 6. This Drum He cannot, he simply cannot be my son, Lester said. He clutched his whiskers with his front paws and shook his head from side to side in despair. Of course he is your son, said Antoinette. What do you mean he is not your son? This is a ridiculous statement. Why must you always make the ridiculous statements? You, said Lester, this is your fault. The French blood in him has made him crazy. C'est moi, said Antoinette. C'est moi, why must it always be I who takes the blame? If your son is such the disappointment, it is as much your fault as mine. Something must be done, said Lester. He pulled on his whisker so hard it came loose. He waved the whisker over his head. He pointed at his wife. He will be the end of us all, he shouted, sitting at the foot of a human king. Unbelievable, unthinkable. Oh, so dramatic, said Antoinette. She held out one paw and studied her painted nails. He is a small mouse. How much of the harm can he do? If there is one thing I have learned in this world, said Lester, it is that mice must act like mice or else there is bound to be trouble. I will call a special meeting of the mouse council. Together we will decide what must be done. Oh, said Antoinette, you and this council of the mouse. It is a waste of time, in my opinion. Don't you understand, shouted Lester. He must be punished. He must be brought up before the tribunal. He pushed past her and dug furiously through a pile of paper scraps until he uncovered a thimble with a piece of leather stretched across its open end. Oh, please, said Antoinette. She covered her ears. Not this drum of the Council of the Mouse. Yes, said Lester. The drum. He held it up high above his head, first to the north and then to the south and then to the east and the west. He lowered it and turned back to his wife and closed his eyes and took a deep breath and began to beat the drum slowly, one long beat with his tail, two staccato beats with his paws. Boom, tat, tat, boom, tat, tat, boom, tat, tat. The rhythm of the drum was a signal for the members of the mouse council. Boom, tat, tat, boom, tat, tat, boom. The beating of the drum would let them know an important decision would have to be made, one that affected the safety and well-being of the entire mouse community. Boom, tat, tat, boom, tat, tat, boom. Chapter 7 And what was our own favorite member of the mouse community doing while the sound of the mouse council drum echoed through the walls of the castle? Reader, I must report that Furlough had not seen the worst of it. Despero sat with the princess and the king and listened to song after song. At one point, gently, oh so gently, the pea picked up the mouse in her hand. She cupped him in her palm and scratched his oversized ears. You have lovely ears, the pea said to him. They are like small pieces of velvet. Despero thought he might faint with the pleasure of someone referring to his ears as small and lovely. He laid his tail against the pea's wrist to steady himself, and he felt the princess's pulse, the pounding of her heart, and his own heart immediately took up the rhythm of hers. Papa, the pea said when the music was over, I'm going to keep this mouse. We are going to be great friends. The king looked at Despero, cupped in his daughter's hands. He narrowed his eyes. A mouse, he muttered. A rodent. What? said the pea. Put it down, the king commanded. No, said the pea, who was a person not at all used to being told what to do. I mean, why should I? Because I told you so. But why? protested the pea. Because it's a mouse. I know. I'm the one who told you he was a mouse. I wasn't thinking, said the king. Thinking of what? Your mother, the queen. My mother, the pea said sadly. Mice are rodents, said the king. He adjusted his crown. They are related to rats. You know how we feel about rats. You know of our own dark history with rats. The pea shuddered. But Papa, she said, he is not a rat. He's a mouse. There's a difference. Royalty, the king said. 
has many responsibilities, and one of them is not being involved personally with even the distant relatives of one's enemies. Put him down, P. The princess put Despero down. Good girl, said the king, and then he looked at Despero. Scat, he said. Despero, however, did not scat. He sat up and stared at the princess. The king stamped his foot. Scat, he shouted. Papa, said the princess, please don't be mean to him. And she began to weep. Despero, seeing her tears, broke the last of the great ancient rules of mice. He spoke to a human. Please, said Despero, don't cry. He held out his handkerchief to the princess. The piece sniffed and leaned down close to him. Do not speak to her, thundered the king. Despero dropped his handkerchief. He backed away from the king. Rodents do not speak to princesses. We will not have this becoming a topsy-turvy, wrong-headed world. There are rules. Scat, get lost, before my common sense returns and I have you killed. The king stamped his foot again. Despero found it alarming to have such a big foot brought down with so much force and anger so close to his own small head. He ran toward the hole in the wall. But he turned before he entered it. He turned and shouted to the princess, My name is Despero. Despero? she said. I honor you, shouted Despero. I honor you is what the knight said to the fair maiden in the story that Despero read every day in the book in the library. Despero had muttered the phrase often to himself, but he had never before this evening had occasion to use it when speaking to someone else. Get out of here, shouted the king, stamping his foot harder and then harder still, so it seemed as if the whole castle, the very world, were shaking. Rodents know nothing of honor. Despero ran into the hall, and from there he looked out at the princess. She had picked up his handkerchief and was looking at it, right directly into his soul. Despero, she said. She saw his name on her lips. I honor you, whispered Despero. I honor you. He put his paw over his heart. He bowed so low that his whiskers touched the floor. He was, alas, a mouse deeply in love. Chapter 8 called to the rats and we will start there tomorrow.